Um, you know that the women as disciples were only included grudgingly in the Gospels. And uh, if it wasn't for the fact that they were the only witnesses to the death and passion and resurrection and burial of Jesus, that they wouldn't have been included at all. And when the short passages were written, um, in the gospel narratives, uh, then there was a little aside that was included and said, oh, by the way, um, these women were disciples with Jesus in Galilee, and they supported him with their means. And so uh, we entered the story almost as a postscript. So um, in the gospels, the women are generally named the myrrh bears in groups of three. And I believe this is because it parallels uh, the naming of Peter, James, and John. So in the synoptic gospels, uh, Mary Magdalene is always included. She's in all four of the gospels. And um, Mary, wife of Alpheus, is included with her in the synoptics. Um, I've come to believe that she's probably Mary Magdalene's best friend. She's with her always. But in the Gospel of Mark, the third woman named is Salome. In the Gospel of Matthew, the third woman named is the mother of the sons of Zebedee. And then, of course, in the Gospel of Luke, the third woman named is Joanna. Uh, in the Gospel of John, and John is mysterious as ever, there's either three women or four women. Scholars could never decide that. So if there were three Marys or four Marys. <laughs> so it leads a little bit, you know, to our imagination. So, um, and, and the reason why different women were named is because certainly all the women were there under the cross and at the tomb for the anointing, they were all myrrh bearers. But as different communities kind of focused on different women kind of as their inspiration or maybe were physical part of their community, um, those particular names worked their way into the gospel. So um, the myrrh bearers were so important to the early church that the Eastern Orthodox Church actually has a Sunday uh, after Easter, the third Sunday of Easter named after them, Myrrh Bearers Sunday. And they recount the whole gospel story, the, uh, the resurrection story again, but focused on you know the women that had a role in that. That's their special day. And um, I think as a community here where we so put emphasis and importance on inclusive language, um, the same thing is true that the women really need to be named. We, we need to know their names. Um, Mary Magdalene always associated with the passion and the resurrection, but the other myrrh bearers as well. So it's very um, edifying and important to me that, you know, the last couple of years, in our liturgy that we've included the women's names. So um, a special tribute today to the women who were the anointers and the healers and the ones who administered to Jesus in his last minutes of death and then came to anoint him for his burial. So at this time, I would ask Steve if he will please bring up our, um, our holy oil, and I would ask Bishop Phil if he will please bless it for us. Just let me know. We're ready for you, Phil. Okay. God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, we give you thanks for the gift of this holy oil, which we have infused with cottonwood buds collected by our own hands. For in the beginning of time, you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as the source of this fragrant oil. May this oil be a visible 
among which olive trees, visible and tangible sign of your perpetual veriditas. On this blessed Easter Sunday morning, may we follow in the footsteps of the holy bearers in using this oil to bring healing of mind, body, and spirit to those in need of your holy anointing. We ask you to bless this oil in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sanctifier. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Phil.